And look at what you've done in, in the last year, two years. Okay, you're at the Oscars with Tammy Faye. Yeah. You're in Emmy season, what they call now, with George and Tammy. You're in Tony season here yeah. on Broadway. All of it merging together. Yeah. Whoa. It's it's like <laughs> kind of like think about that. It's mind boggling. It's mind boggling. It's a bit surprising because I always expect the worst. I mean, people <laughs> have so many. They've shown me like memes or gifs. I don't know the difference between a meme and a gif, but it's the video or that plays over and over again. I think that's a gif, right? <laughs> so of me, like when I when something happens and I like at the SAG Awards yeah. when I won, two years I was, in a row you won it. <laughs> right, but both times I was shocked. Really? You know what I mean? I mean, yes, like I can't. I mean, for the Oscars, I for some reason was prepared a little bit. Like I knew it was a very tight race, but I was like, there's a possibility I might win. But when I, most of the time, I am out of my mind. Like I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. Like at the SAG Awards for George and Tammy, I like tripped on the way to the stage. I was like <laughs> thinking about who, what can I talk about? Like it, it just, it, it's, I'm not someone who expects all of this. Right. And I just, I love the work so much and I love to do what I get to do that, that, that feels like such a reward. And when people respond the way that they have over the last year and a half, it just feels like, okay, maybe I bought myself some more time. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Oh, <laughs> Didn't want Are you to. listening to yourself? I got seven kids at home counting on me. I don't need an eighth. I couldn't face it, standing out there in some dumb monkey suit. I got you the suit you wanted. You're wearing it. I got it for you. And look at you now, rolling in here looking like hell. This thing that's just ours, it shouldn't be for everybody else. When you're standing up there with everybody's eyes crawling all over you, don't you feel it? Just eating away at everything that's true. Mm-mm. No. All I felt was alone. You talk about how all those people out there are dangerous and how all those people out there, they're trying to cut us into pieces. And if you believe that, and I know you do, you leave in the way th that you did. You fed me to them. I just needed off the ride for a minute. You can't bear happiness. <sighs> Nobody wants me happy. Welcome today. First off, she is a Tony nominee <laughs> for A Doll's House. So exciting. Thank you. And a, just a SAG winner already for the Showtime limited series, George and Tammy. Of course, an Oscar winner for The Eyes of Tammy Faye and so many other great movies, television, plays. You do it all. Welcome, Jessica Thank Chastain. You, Pete. <laughs> Thank you for coming to New York. Oh, I'm so absolutely. happy to see you. We're here in our New York studio, um, and congratulations on A Doll's House yeah. and the Tony. Thank you. I mean, that's pretty exciting. It's a, it's a, you know, a throwback, a little Ibsen, 1879. So to, <laughs> and it's the first time um, a woman has adapted it, Amy Herzog. So it's well, pretty exciting to have all the attention we've had. That is really exciting, mm -hmm. and it's such a different take. I mean, you you're not working with props in this show. No, what I would do for a prop? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm. It's it's really the director Jamie Lloyd. He for me, it was, this whole thing was an exercise in yes and. So every time he would ask me to do something really like, oh, this is so hard, I'd be like, okay, yes, I trust you. I just kept saying over and over again, I trust you, I trust you. That's so funny. I learned yes and I took a second yes. city workshop Improv. in LA mm -hmm. and everyone was actors in there. I was taking it from a point of view of a writer and the first thing they teach you is yes and never throw the yes. word no out. I, it's such an important thing for an actor, I think, in particular. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's so, it's kind of amazing that you did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah of course, it makes sense that you, but it's really amazing that you did because not everyone would take a class like that. But the great thing about anyone taking improv is, you real, is it really teaches you to hold a space for others. Yeah. And so when someone has a contribution to make, instead of immediately saying, no, I don't really feel like it, you go, 
I mean, the goal is you say yes, and let's do this too. So yeah. you're always building something together. And so yes, for for with with Jamie, as bizarre and as difficult as the things he asked me to do, I was it was an exercise in yes and. I was I was happy to collaborate and and tell his tell the story the way he wanted to tell it. Yeah. The interesting thing on Doll's House that you do also, you you open it and you're staring at the audience. Yes. Do you know, do you have like friends that you Oh seen? my gosh, I've seen Al Pacino, <laughs> um, Lee Ullman. Wow. Um, I mean, Emily Blunt and John Kaczynski was there, were there last night. I mean, there's been incredible, Ray Fiennes, oh, wow. Maggie Gyllenhaal. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm there for about 20 minutes before the show and it's really, that's also an exercise in getting a still nerve, is that what they call it, still <laughs> nerve? Where you're really like, I used to get so much, I would have so much nerves and stage fright. And now here's, again, yes, and the director is having me really be present with the audience and take them in energetically and, and to create the space. But I can't, it's like, it gets rid of any idea of like pretending they're not there. I definitely know they're there. Oh, that's wild. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't heard of that before. Somebody, yeah. an actor doing that. It's, it's kind of fun, huh? It's fun. I'm now at the point where I really like doing it because I it connects me to an uh, the audience in a really profound way. And it feels like we're about to go on this journey together. But man, I really, I used to take, you know, Rescue Remedy, yeah. like the like spray, <laughs> those herbal sprays. I was like, before I would get on stage, I would, you know, have to like breathe and calm down. And then I would sometimes hum to myself in the very beginnings and I'd hold my, I, the position is this. And yeah. it started like this because I was shaking so much. Wow. And then now it's more of like, okay, I'm slumped and it's more calm. <laughs> this is a return to Broadway. You have yeah. not been here in quite some, I know, some years. Over a decade. You've been busy. I've been, I've done some things. Yeah, you've done a few things. <laughs> but what was at this point getting back to the stage? Because, you know, you, you, you are someone of the stage as yes. well. So. Well, I grew up in the theater world. I mean, I was a kid who, I, you know, I think it's so important for the arts to be in school. And because the reality is I didn't have the most easy time growing up. And uh, theater was the place that I kind of found my people and felt like I, I had found a community of people who could see me and understand me and accept me for everything that I was. Um, it's a beautiful thing to kind of find your people like that. And so it's very emotional to me and almost nostalgic for me to be back because it's been 10 years where I haven't been on stage and I've in, in some sense been away from the, the theater community. I've been an audience member, but I've never been like a part of a of storytelling. And it's just, it's, it's like I've had a hole in my heart. And so Jamie Lloyd bringing me back into the theater has been very, I'm very, I have a lot of, lot of gratitude for it. Yeah, and you certainly were welcomed back with open arms. I it's I can, been really I read special. Reviews. Oh, I haven't read them yet. Okay. It's the first time, because normally I do read reviews. I you read do. for everything. Yeah. And Jamie Lloyd said to me, he goes, I beg you, to all of us, I beg you not to read the reviews. And I was thinking, I'm like, why? And he goes, and trust me, if they're good, it's worse because it will change your performance. Do not read a review until after the play closes. Wow. And again, yes, and I was like, I'm going to do whatever Jamie asks of me. But I have heard that they've been very positive. Yeah. I first heard your name from our mutual late great friend, Dan Ireland, um, who said, I have somebody starring in my movie. You are not going to believe her. She is so amazing. And that was Jolene. And that was 2008, uh, even before that. I don't even remember. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was right after I did Salome in Los Angeles with Al Pacino, right. and um, and then we were making a film of Salome, and then I don't know if Dan came to the show. I, I went to, to an audition, and it was he was the sweetest, most lovely man, and he he taught me so much about film history, and yeah. I watched I watched films with Dan that I had never seen before, and I went to the Seattle Film Festival with him, which he created. <laughs> so, yeah, he loved that. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Very special man. And so that was it, you know, Jolene. And boy, was he right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> he really was right. Um, and you're, you're doing it all now, too, producing mm -hmm. so many of your projects. Yeah. You did Eyes of Tammy Faye. You've done George and Tammy, which is the Showtime limited series as a producer, and many others. You're not, you know, talking the talk. You really walk the walk as a producer. Mm -hmm. I can tell you're really invested in that. How important is that to you to, to have that? Oh, it's amazing to be a part of it and to be into someone, to have someone um, 
be willing to share the space at the table um, in terms of creativity. I mean, I, I don't micromanage anyone. You know, that's not why I want to be a producer. I just want to be a producer uh, and am a producer to help tell, use my platform to amplify stories that might not get told. And also with George and Tammy, our showrunner, Abe Sylvia, he's the most incredible man and, you know, uh, has so much empathy and, and, you know, he had a very close relationship, has a close relationship with Georgette Jones, their daughter. But even so, there were some times too, I'm like, well, can we add this or can we do this in terms of her being a mother? And there's, you know, we, and I have a female led production company when you have women also at the table, they can, you know, help flesh out a character in a way that it might not have been. Yeah, exactly. And that's very important to you, the diversity and and women and giving them that opportunity behind the scenes and yes. everything else. I've even read something where you turned down a role because they disagreed on having a woman in a key position there or something. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, mm -hmm. you really that's very important. It's I mean, it's it's very important. And I've walked away from a lot of projects. I mean, I, I, I remember one time I signed up. This actually happened twice before the whole Me Too movement, before it became like in vogue, you know, <laughs> to do all this. I was always I had a goal. I was like, I'm going to work with a female filmmaker every year. And that started uh, because I saw the difference of how Catherine Bigelow was treated um, when oh, yeah. we released Zero Dark, Zero Dark Thirty. And I was so shocked by how people were talking to her and treating her compared to how they spoke to, you know, male directors that I worked with. And I started talking about it publicly, this difference that I watched. And then I said, like, I'm going to start making the space for female filmmakers and, and using my platform to amplify, um, you know, to, you know, their opportunities. And I saw it would sign on to projects because it was a project I was interested in, but also maybe it was a first time, first time female filmmaker or uh, maybe someone who's still really an ex experienced one, but not had, who really wasn't being given opportunities. And I would sign on solely because of them. And then twice this happened, right after I signed on, they came to me with a list of other directors that they might bring it to, like bigger directors. Uh. And I was like, no, 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 you guys don't <laughs> understand. I signed on because of her. Uh. Um, so That's it's interesting. it's interesting. I mean, it wouldn't happen now. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's been a long journey. Wow. Well, keep doing that. That's amazing. Thanks. And not just behind the scenes, but Tammy Wynette, George and Tammy, and Tammy Faye, mm -hmm. you brought such complexity and a different humanity than we ever knew about either one of them. Mm. I think you know. <laughs> I mean, you found other things that people just think they know these people, and they don't. Yeah, I mean, that's very interesting to me. I think in any part I play, I like attacking some type of stereotype of view about a woman, perceptions that someone may have, even Molly Bloom. Yeah. You know, I, I or you know, characters I've played, I want to kind of go beyond this first initial knee-jerk reaction to a character, um, and that may be a woman in history, and say, well, what was really playing out? And actually, how was society working against this character, and why did she um, have to do the things she did to, in some sense, have some sense, you know, some success in, in what she did. And that was really exciting to me in, in playing Tammy Faye and also playing Tammy Wynette. I mean, Tammy Wynette, I judged her from the very beginning. I, right. because I was like, oh, this, you know, I know there was a thing with, with the feminist and they were upset about her because stand by your man. And then there was a Hillary Clinton thing. Yeah, and the I, Hillary Clinton You know thing. what I mean? It was <laughs> so crazy. And then as I started to learn about her life, I just couldn't help but feel so much empathy. The fact that this woman showed up in Nashville when she did in the 60s yeah. and really changed the name of country music forever. Right. Um, and that has helped so many women in the industry. Even to this day, I've talked to a lot of country singers that are so inspired by Tammy Wynette. I just have so much respect for her. And I have, I'm like, I was really excited to show the public version of Tammy that she had to put out there in order to be accepted, in order to be able to actually have a career, and also the private side of her. And you really weren't a Tammy Wynette fan when you came on to this whole thing? No, I mean, I love, I do love folk music, right. Emmylou Harris. I love like singer songwriters. I knew, of course, Stand By Your Man. Right. Um, but I just didn't know the history behind this woman. Yeah. I didn't know the cost of leaving your husband back then, what she went through. Um, 
how, like, how young she was when she had three kids as a single divorced mom in Nashville saying, I'm going to be a country music singer. When at that time, girl singers were not given any respect. Yeah. Uh, and so it, it was really inspiring for me to um, get to know her. And now I, I'm definitely a fan. I thought what you just said about being the mother mm. really comes through. It's very important, that aspect of it, yes. which people don't know at all, what, you know, three kids and dealing with a husband on and off, divorce, this and that, with addiction and everything else going on in her life. How tough. Yeah, I think sometimes <laughs> when you think of the stories of the past, you see well, there are certain like archetypes for women. It's like you're like the sexy romance or you're, you know, like you're this kind of like woman who needs to be saved. And there's all these kind of boxes of characters that women have filled. And we are like, how can we really f show as much as we can? I mean, we can't really show everything. It's not a documentary, but like, how could we really show this three dimensional version of her and um, and that the more research we did we just kept hearing about how much she loved to take care of everyone how much she loved being a mom and taking care of her kids how she loved cooking for the people around her so in addition to her being like this object of George's affection and like you know she's sexy and loving and what incredible performer she was and she was so great to her fans we also wanted to show like this is who she was behind the scenes um, because again she had to be a real person yeah and no lip syncing here. Oh, my God. <laughs> this I, is the real deal. I go back to Sissy Spacek. Wow, she's really singing Lauren yeah, Lynn, and yeah. you're really singing Tammy here. Thank you, Pete. <laughs> it's been, I mean, this was something that kind of came to be. I When I signed on, I've been attached for over 10 years, and so I've been training and learning the songs. I didn't really understand that there would be live onset singing because <laughs> You know, I think in the past what you do is you go and you do pre-records and then, and this is one new thing I learned, they usually blend voices with, right. so they'll get the actor's voice and then a singer's voice yeah. and they'll blend it to make the actor sound better, yeah. which is insane. <laughs> I didn't know that that was a thing that happened. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and instead, we didn't do that like kind of computer generated voice. Right. What we did is... The Abe Sylvia, who comes from musical theater before he became a writer, he was actually on Broadway. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he. Um, it was and John Hillcoat, who of course um, has an incredible relationship with musicians and does the most beautiful videos and films. Um, decided that all of the songs would be performed as the scenes were. In, in fact, so we would be singing live, and that would mean Mike as George would say something that maybe wasn't scripted or improv something i could sometimes i wouldn't sing a line if i didn't feel like singing the line yeah. and it just made it feel so alive and so authentic no matter what we're never going to sound like george jones and tammy wet when it <laughs> there's a reason why they were the iconic singers that they were and performers that they were but it was our job to tell the story and the only way to do that was to be as authentic um, as possible in the storytelling and that meant no lip singing. And that was really scary. <laughs> <laughs> and I would imagine the harmony, getting yeah. that blend with Michael Shannon, who's so brilliant as George Jones. Yeah. Did you spend months and months with vocal coaches? Months and, and months with Ron Browning, who they flew out from Nashville. Right. And who works with kind of everyone. He's the, the guy. Uh, and Mike and I, he taught us, we would do things like patty cake, you know, we're gonna hold <laughs> on, you know, and like he would have us just sit facing each other and work on our harmonies and do a, you know, so we kind of would get, he kept saying, I want to feel the groove, I yeah. want you to patty cake. <laughs> Um, and months and months and months and months. And every single day, you know, Ron was on set with us. We would train with him. So when it got to the point of like, okay, we're singing, and they, all the musicians on set were from Nashville. They were, they were the session players. We, it was in between takes, Mike would just start playing like something, and then they'd start playing. They'd all make songs together. Um, it really felt like a musical environment. And also, I have to say, our day players, like the um, background artists, uh -huh were incredible because there would be times, especially Stand By Your Man, I'm singing in front of hundreds of people. And before I went out on stage, I was like, this is so scary. You know, when you're acting, there may be times when you mess up a line. Right. 
But when you mess up a line when you're singing, that means like you hit a bad note in front yeah. of hundreds of people. That's embarrassing, <laughs> you know, and it's not going to be perfect right. every time. And they were like that whole scene. They didn't know I was going to ask them to sing with me. <laughs> they didn't know I'd be sitting on their laps and sticking the microphone in their faces. That all kind of came from the day. Yeah. And um, there was just a lot of support and, and a, a lot of goodwill on this set. That's amazing. And you and Michael <laughs> Shannon, this is not your first time working together because I remember seeing I know. Food Shelter. And how ha helpful is that to have a past relationship with an actor? You know each other's rhythms and things maybe from working before. How did that help you in this project? It's hugely important. I mean, again, like I did scenes from a marriage with Oscar Isaac and he and I have been friends for over 20 years. Mike and I have been friends since we met on the set of Take Shelter. That was what, 2010? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you don't know like how the ro how is the romance part going to be, but the reality, the one thing you do know is I love this person. Right. I care about their well being. I also know they're not a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're going to like be there and support everyone. It's going to be a good um, and they're brilliant actors. And so with Mike, it, and also I knew knew him as a musician. I, I had seen him perform with his band. I just felt safe in in a project that made me feel unsafe because I was. It was m definitely charting new territory that was incredibly scary for me. Uh, I felt like no matter what, I have a partner in crime, per se, yeah. and we were going to um, take care of each other. Do you like this format, the limited series? Because last year you did Scenes from a Marriage, mm -hmm. which you mentioned, yeah. which was in that format as well. It seems like it's drawing the A-list -A actors mm. now to television in that way. Yeah, I think it's really interesting to have more time to tell a story. I mean, George and Tammy started out as a film script. Again, I've been attached for over a decade, and um, there were so many iterations of it. But we sing over 30 songs, right. and we show the whole song in the series. So yeah. there's no way you can do that in two hours no. to show their relationship over all these decades and years. So I definitely appreciate it being a miniseries more than being a film. Um, because I get to spend more time in telling the story. And scenes from a marriage, I mean, that actually started as a mini story. Eva Bergman. I know it did. No one knows. You, you know, because you're a film expert. I actually but, have the series. Yes. They put it out. Yes, and it was on Criterion a couple yeah. years ago, too. But right? I had seen <laughs> scenes from a marriage um, as the movie, Ingmar yes, Bergman of movie. Course. To go back and look at That's it amazing. in that format was mm -hmm. really interesting. Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> long form is, is pretty great at yeah. telling a story. Doesn't mean. I'm gonna give up anything. Like you said, I'm doing theater now. I love making movies. I've, I have a great collaboration with Michelle Franco, who uh, we're, he and I are gonna work together on another film. Um, Michelle I, Franco, by the way, is a fascinating director. Oh, he's fantastic. I mean, his movies uh, that I've seen, the last two of them, really are haunting. Super haunting. And um, we did this very small film in, in New York that he is in post right now, and he's, he's finishing it up. and immediately on set of that he's like let's work together again We're, you know and then he wrote this brilliant script he's he's a very special artist wow. but i tend to work with the same people over and over again mm -hmm. um i like i like to feel safe and trust and um i love working with a director i've worked with before i also love working with a first time filmmaker which i've done many times yeah. but i i i think i do my best work when I don't feel like we have to get to know someone. <laughs> like imagine doing a romance where it's supposed to be the romance of all ages, like George and Tammy, and be like, hi, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> that's that's harder, that's a harder job. Going all the way back to when I first heard about you on Jolene oh. uh, to now, it's an amazing. Thank you, well you have always been incredibly, I remember, cause I, I remember meeting you, <clears throat> I remember talking about film with you and you've always been so kind to me, you know, and. Because sometimes there are people who are like, I always knew. And you're like, did you though? <laughs> but you were always very supportive and very kind to me. And I really appreciate it. Oh, you. well, thank me tell you. Thank and you. And just uh, keep going. And thank you so much for joining us today, Jessica. It's Chastain. my absolute pleasure.